are recording. <clears throat> Good morning, everyone. This is Dan with the Spiritual Underground Podcast. Uh, we're doing this one here on video and audio. Uh, if you're not familiar with the podcast, if this is your first time bumping up against us, um, this is primarily a 12-step recovery-based podcast, although I do explore all and any avenues I can get my hands on, on how people, uh, um, actions people take to improve the quality of their lives. I'll do a couple commercials, dtmww.net. Uh, it's my little handyman uh, woodworking business in the Louisville metropolitan area. And Darren Frank's music wraps around these podcasts. I, uh, you know, I, I don't know if that will be the case in the YouTube. I'm still a, a rookie when it comes to putting video components together. Uh, but for the audio, certainly. And uh, the main topic of today's podcast, 12-step uh, spiritual recovery a book by James Christopher Cohn. Um, it can be found on Amazon. <clears throat> it is the 12 steps for anyone and everyone. It's the way I was taken through the steps uh, in my current sobriety date. I stumbled around for a while and, uh, and uh, I met Christopher and uh, this book didn't exist then, but the methodology and the knowledge that he possessed from his teachers did and uh and uh you know i want to use the word i was the lucky uh recipient of that but but i don't really believe in luck all that much anymore and uh i, I do fully believe that it was destined that he and i come together and you know I, I i don't think it's luck anymore that that i was able to uh that i was handed these tools so uh, that's what we're going to talk about. The, the movement has been going on for two years now. Uh, March the 14th this year was the second year or the two year anniversary of our very first meeting. Uh, and, and I'm a little foggy. I went back in my records a little bit and uh, ex exactly the timeline. And that's a, something I struggle with forever. If you all listen to me, uh, the timelines are just something I can't get my arms around. Uh, don't add up, but I think the book come out. Right. I think right before that, I, 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 it doesn't really matter, but sometime in that same timeline. So the movement got launched at about that same time. And that's the date we picked for our anniversary. And I wanted to do a, a two year uh, celebration of that and uh, see, you know, who we can attract. Cause we know by hanging around here that uh, the world need, needs some tools. A vast majority of the world needs some tools and uh, these are working for us. And, um, just want to continue to uh, carry this thing as far and wide as we possibly can. Uh, I actually have in my hands here a book that only two people have. It says, not for resale. Uh, Christopher got a, a, a review copy of it early and, uh, and, and got me one too. So uh, I'll be forever uh, grateful for that. And I thought that I would... Uh, I'm going to read a little bit out of it, and then uh, the bunches in this group, I'll turn the mic over to Christopher for a little bit, and he can talk about what, what's what been going on from his perspective and how he sees it, what he feels, and um, and then uh, we will just uh, flow and, and talk about what what these 12 steps have done for all the people that's in this room. Uh, I had a little trouble picking who I wanted to invite. It wasn't because of, uh, you know, I just don't want to exclude anybody, but I also want to uh, bring good examples of what, of, of people that really have had a real impact in their lives of it. And more than just you, more than just you see here have, uh, it's, it's, uh, probably be unmanageable to have, uh, everybody in at once. So, uh, this is the final chapter in here. And, uh, I'm just going to read a little. I'm going to jump around. I read through it and I picked some, some stuff. Um, all right. Time to lay all my cards on the table and reveal my highest aspiration in writing this book. In short, beloved reader, I want to start a movement and I need your help. This book has been my humble attempt to put several of the puzzle pieces together. We started out by utilizing the technique approach that Bill Wilson applied to alcoholism how the external manifestations of negative behaviors and destructive actions witnessed from people and in our world today, but were a mere symptoms of a much deeper malady. Then we examined how this deeper malady occurred inside a person was not chiefly physical or psychological in nature, but occurred more on the level of the spirit or the soul. 
And since there was a need to universalize this invisible affliction seemingly carried by all human beings these days, yet varying broadly in demonstrated outer symptoms, the catch-all diagnosis of spiritual sickness was first identified by the founders of the recovery movement, uh, seemed the most apt and was adopted. Next week examined how the core causes of the spiritually sick condition resulted from the cumulative infections of negative energy a person had received over their lifetime, both from their historical conditioning and from presently living amid a world populated by others affected, afflicted carriers as controlled by fundamentally diseased systems and institutions. And we pointed out how over time, these many exposures to negativity which their pure child would have naturally been repulsed by and rejected had now come to sicken their inner spirit and to cause their very soul to become ill. These countless unnoticed and miscellaneous, but generally bad experiences from our child, our childhood sustained acquired at the hands of valuable mortal men and women, not from any God proceeded to de define our programming. And we based this definition on how, mechanisms of the brain. Whoop, I think I skipped a part. I did. I missed that. Uh, I went too far. So I'm going to stop there because I realized I went too far. I do have a couple more. After 80 plus long years of relatively small segment of the world's population enjoying this treasure trove of spiritual blessings, which the completion of the 12 steps brings into any person's life who does them, my highest aspiration is that now is the time to finally bring this God-delivered gift to the rest of humanity. And I am respectfully, respectfully requesting that you, my dearest friend and devoted reader, join with us in this stirring new movement and higher in power inspired calling to do so. What if this meant to be our world altering moment and sea change event we've all been praying for to come true within our lifetimes here? to finally begin the productive work of rejecting and turning back the many shades of false programming and limiting beliefs and wrongly taught ways of living, which are consuming our fellows and destroying our planet. And instead to bring our newly awakened collective energies as a growing army of spiritual warrior healers to the cause of sharing God's greatest gift of the 12 steps with all our fellows. What if these hard and soul sucking times don't have to continue and become our children and grandchildren's inescapable future. First and foremost, these afflicted folks will need a place to go. Yes, we need to start 12 step spiritual recovery meetings. And it's not as hard as you might think. Traditionally, anywhere that two or more souls are gathered to share and exchange personal experiences and discuss solution talk, Utilizing the 12 step toolkit is a recovery meeting. So basically all a person needs to begin is just one other interested person in a room. Here's what, here is, here's what is already in the works as I write these words. Higher power has been steadily gathering and drawing near an ever growing number of interested souls who are both eager and emotionally taken by this exciting proposition of spreading the 12 step message of hope and recovery to everybody. So much so that they are literally knocking on my door every day, asking me when this blasted book will be finished so we can get this brand new juice filled adventure started. <clears throat> One of them in particular, who just happens to be a much loved sponsee of mine, has said several times during our meetings, I'm so juiced up about this prospect that after all these decades of saying to newcomers, let's see, you have this problem, you go here, and you have this other problem, and you go over here. Instead, I can't wait to say, you have any kind of problem, please come here, for I have a spiritual solution that works for everybody and can help you too. And then he gestures with his first finger toward himself in a come closer motion, offering a huge hug of the warmest welcome to any prospective newcomer that communicates so much better than words. Your searching has come to an end. You belong right here with us. In the final paragraph. So concludes our fantastic journey for now, but not permanently. If you don't wish for the adventure to end, and I very much hope to one day meet you and hug you and exchange stories of how we are both progressing in our mutual goal of positive spiritual evolution across our planet. 
I meant what I said in the chapter on step 12 about the tremendous honor it has been to walk alongside you throughout this immeasurable leap ahead in your eternal soul's growth and development. And I humbly thank you once more for allowing me to experience the depths of juice I have reaped from you and from this whole endeavor of creating this hopefully meaningful book has been beyond description, it brings tears to my eyes and a gratitude that fills me up from head to toe and then drives me to my knees in humility and awe. I pray that God will continue to bless us as we widen and forge the recovery pathway ahead in our time for all who want it. I pray that God will continue to bless us just as our ultimate parent already has by gifting us with this most sacred bequest for happiness and peace for all his and her children here called the 12 steps. And this book has some stuff in it that uh, others don't. Uh, has some lyrics from songs and stuff uh, that I thought about reading at the beginning of that chapter, but uh, after it was removed out of there, I thought, ah, I better leave that out. Uh, if you have an early copy, you have some of that. I was sit down last night thinking about this podcast, and uh, and I, that book come to mind. And uh, and all you know, just like in what has happened to me time and time again, excuse me, uh, I get direction. I receive direction when I ask and I sit down and I'm quiet. Uh, I don't know, you know, I'm thinking about this podcast. I'm out in my wood shop and I think, okay, you know what, how am I going to go? What are we going to do? And just like I've learned in here, I pause, I just sit quietly and the answers come. And that book hit me, pinged me. I walked in here, I grabbed it, I took it back out to the wood shop and opened it up on my workbench and intuitively turned to the final chapter and ping, I started seeing these paragraphs that just moved me last night. And I said, thank you, uh, got it now. Uh, I know I know how to get this thing rolling tomorrow morning. So uh, that's what we'll do. Um, as podcast goes, uh, I want to keep a. Uh, I want to. I want to express how much this means to me, and uh, and what how just just how magnificently my life has been transformed as a result of doing this work. So uh, I'm going to turn the mic over to Chris, to Christopher, and uh, we'll get this show on the road. Christopher, thanks, Dan. Thank you, Dan. Brings tears to my eyes as well, brother. I appreciate that. Um, uh, thank you, everybody, for being here this morning. It's good to see you all, and thank you for your service work to help carry this message. I appreciate it so deeply. Uh, so there were two questions that were on Dan and my mind. <laughs> Uh, before we started this journey of releasing the book and uh, getting the meetings going. And the first question I had was, you know, I had had this transformative experience at 18 years recovery where I thought I was doing just great <laughs> in my uh, journey spiritually. I mean, I'd had some pretty profound teachers and uh, <clears throat> my life was dramatically better. Um, and yet I started to get these teachers in the 12 step program come into my life that had this glow and this what we call the juice, but you can always see it in the eyes. You can always see this warmth and peace and deep compassion for other human beings, a kindness. And it's always so evident to me when I watch some of my fellows in the program who don't have it and they still have that edge and you can still feel that anger and that cynicism and lack of tolerance. So I was seeing these teachers and I'm like, they've got something I can, <laughs> it, it, it's just too evident. Each one of them did. It was a, it was a common theme among all of them. And I'm like, you know, I'm a kind of guy, well, I mean, at core, I'm an addict. So I want more and I want better. And I'm like, well, I got to figure out what that is. And I've always been on that sort of seeking path my entire life. Even as a kid, I used to wear my parents out asking questions about, the universe and God and all that jazz and trying to figure things out. And some things just don't have an answer for us, but I'll be damned if I'll accept that. It's just not the way I'm wired. And uh, so I started hunting these teachers down and I was very fortunate that one of them resided right here in Louisville, Kentucky. His name is Dr. Burns Brady. 
And uh, he gives away his sobriety name when he speaks and he speaks all over the damn world. So um, I'm sure he wouldn't have any problem with me saying that. Um, through a series of circumstances, he agreed to take me through the steps personally. He met with me on Sunday afternoons in his office and uh, we went on the journey. And um, between him and probably a thousand different speakers, within our program who tour the country and the world and share the experience, strength, and hope of this program. Um, I started knitting together this new path and deeper level recovery that when you say that to people, and I know I've heard you say that on your podcast a lot, Dan, people look at you askance, like, you know, who do you think you are? You know, oh, you're some sort of spiritual guru. You did the steps different. Da, 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 da. And I would just ask people to think logically about this. You know, we've had this program since 1935. And if you look at the way the world was in 1935 to the way it is in 2021, I don't think there's anybody who's reasonable who can deny that we live in a completely different world. We've learned so much. It's literally the dark ages. If you really think about 1935, people, what they thought, believed, and how they acted. And so, um, and the resources they didn't have available to them, spiritual books, television, media, social media, YouTube. I mean, my Lord, we have so many options today to work on ourselves and develop ourselves that they did not have in 1935. And so, and we even have the example that I point to quite logically of Bill Wilson, who wrote the damn 12 steps and co-founded Alcoholics Anonymous with Dr. Bob, who felt at 13 years recovery that he had not written the depth of the steps in the original big book. That was his own take on it so that he wrote a second book called 12 Steps and 12 Traditions that he felt like he had only glanced the surface of what these steps could do. And so that was 13 years after it was published, roughly in 1948 or so. And then, you know, things have changed since 1948. And what's changed is we've had millions of people come through the doors of all 12-step fellowships, not just AA, but NA and OA and SA and all the A's, man, all the anonymous 12-step programs that are out there. God knows how many there are now. And as these people are doing the process and getting better at it and teachers are continuing to do the process, it's not like you do the steps once, you do it several times throughout your journey. They're learning more things about the depth of what was offered to us by, by this gift that was given to us by a higher power that could literally change, I believe, the trajectory of our world that we do not have to go down with the ship. I believe that with all my heart that this was given to us at the right time to turn this Titanic boat around. Um, and so when people say, well, you know, I just did this steps and that was enough for me. I'm like, well, that's fine. You have that right, but there's so much more available. And so the first question, getting back to my original point of what was in our mind was, would this work for others? I knew that I had had this complete path changing experience and 18 years recovery. And when I say path changing, you always know when somebody's had this deeper level of recovery because they start to align their goals and their dreams in their life around this idea of service and helping others. It's not that they don't have their own wants and needs and dreams and fantasies and things like that. We're all human, but they begin to walk, not just talk, a path of what are you actually going to do to put that into work, to be of more service to the planet, to the, be of more service to your fellows. And, and certainly up until that point, I mean, my self-centeredness, as Bill Wilson says, it was much better at 18 years of recovery, but it was still pretty much still about me. And my whole life has changed. My, my whole career has changed, going back to school and getting my master's degree, all that stuff happened after I did this deeper level work and the result of which has made me happier than I've ever been in my entire life. My life is more full and more rich than it's ever been. And it's not based on a bank account. It's based on all these other souls and friends I have in my life who love me and I love them. And it brings me to tears. So many people don't have that. I know Dan was telling me a story yesterday about a job he got where he knew the customer just wanted somebody to talk to. 
they didn't really need the work done. And, you know, it almost brought tears to my eyes to think about that, that there's so many lonely, lost souls out there that don't have this deep family that we get by doing this work because we share the work together and we're all doing the same thing. So it bonds us. So at first question again was, I didn't know if it would work for other people who are in recovery to get that deeper level work, which it has <laughs> emphatically. And you're going to hear about that today. Um, and then the second question we had is, will this really translate to other people who don't have an ism? You know, because um, if there's one thing that's true about alcoholics and addicts, we have this fire licking at our behind, <laughs> the fires of hell <laughs> that we know we're going to die, that we know it's going to be horrible. <laughs> if we continue on this path, we're going to end up in prison institutions or death. And um, that extra little bit of <laughs> encouragement, motivation, whatever you want to call it, uh, forces us to have to do the entire 12 step process. And it is a process. You have to take this on as a commitment that I want to change, that I want something better. And um, so we didn't know if people with lesser, maybe, and then that, that's even a hard call to say, to say that they have lesser issues in their life, which I don't know if I really believe that, but that's the sort of the thought out there. I mean, certainly is the thought in our program. If you talk to other people, they'll say it's a, things like that. It's like, well, they don't have the same urgency to change as we do. And I, I don't know if I agree with that anymore. The world's becoming so sick out there and people are so frustrated. I mean, look, at what's happening in just our government and our country with the politics this past year. I mean, this is, this is a reflection of how sick people are becoming with being fed all this stuff all the time and not having any place to get rid of it and to dump it and get free. And so we just decided to open up the meetings and open up the doors. And like we say in the program, keep the lights on. And that's our job is to hold the seat, hold the seat until the people show up. And steadily we started to have people come in and it was really interesting to me how they were sort of the, the path that led people to come you know, through maybe somebody who was already in the program, who they were involved with in the family, or somebody who was referred, right? I had other therapists at, at our other hospital that had just out of the blue said, you might want to go check out this group. And I know for one of our members, this worked out to be a, the best thing that ever happened to her. Um, and people started to come in and we just started offering the solution. And of course, Dan and I were kind of like, and people there to sponsor people at first, and, and we didn't have strong ladies at first, which to me is the greatest gift we've been given now. Our ladies group on Tuesday nights is every week. I'm just amazed. I'm astounded at the work they're doing, and they're getting ready to go on retreat again, and um, they are carrying that damn message, and they are sponsoring people, and and, you know, Dan and I had to take up that slack at first, but not anymore. <laughs> if I get a woman come in and say, I need a female sponsor, I know where to send her and, and she'll be taken care of. Um, and that's all in just two years time that we've been able to develop this group uh, of strong people who have done the work. And the feedback we're getting from the people, this is really the most amazing thing that maybe Dan can touch on when I shut up here. The feedback we're getting from, from the normal, <laughs> the normies, who do the work is the same exact feedback that you get from somebody who has addiction, who does the work is that I'm so much more at peace. I feel so much more content with my life. I'm happy. I'm, I'm, I'm starting to align my goals and my daily t tasks with what I want out of life. And, and I have a clarity about what's important to me, what's most meaningful and not wasting time on garbage. And uh, to watch those results, I can't tell you how many times my jaw just drops when I'm hearing people in our group complete their fifth step and sharing their juice, the same exact juice that we get, they get the same exact juice. And then coming in and saying they've done their amends or they're doing their amends and they're sharing the same exact results we're getting, these miracles happening in their life. Um, and it's just convincing me more and more that, you know, this shit works. And I'm cussing purposefully here. This shit works for anybody that's willing to do it. We knew this in the program, and now we're finding out it's true in TSSR. And these people who are here today will share some of that with you. So um, I'll wrap it up by saying this. If you can find me any other method, I tell my patients this almost every other day. <laughs> 
If you can go on the internet, start researching any other methodology to completely transform the way you look at the world and the way you act, not just walk, not just talk it, but walk it. That is laid out as simply as this one is one through 12. You know exactly what you're supposed to do next. That has a simple instructions that only takes four to six months to do. That is our experience. If you really buckle in four to six months and that you come out the other end completely different and better. And I say better because you're more connected to the planet. You're more connected to your fellows. You're more connected to what's really important uh, and not all that other garbage that's causing our species to die, <laughs> guys. Um, I'll wrap it up on this. I was watching that movie Downsizing yesterday uh, with Matt Damon, and I thought on the surface it was just going to be some goofy movie about shrinking people down to size because the planet resources are running thin and so if everybody's smaller, we might be able to survive. And then towards the end of it, the movie completely took a left turn and shifted. And this was in 2017 that this movie came out and was basically, they ran into a community of people who had decided they were going to go underground to this place they had built um, to survive this 8,000 years. It's going to take for the planet to reheal when it kicks us off of here because we're facing extinction because the methane gases are going to just get worse as the ice melts. And I was reading an article yesterday about how the entire shoreline of the United States is being changed by sea levels because it's killing all the trees and brush. And as you kill all the trees and brush, you get more methane. And so this system we have, systems and institutions, is killing us. It's not working. And we're all going along with it thinking, oh, well, maybe somebody else will do something about it. <sighs> Throughout history, every single spiritual teacher that has carried any weight in the history of humankind has said the same exact message. You have to go within and change yourself to change the world, period. You must go within and change yourself first. Clean your own house. And unless we do, we're not going to make it. So if you would like to change and if you would like a better life and if you'd like to show that example to others around you who are desperately needing that, come join us. As we like to say sometimes, come play with us. Come join our groups, our Zoom meetings on Tuesday nights and, and Thursday nights, Tuesday nights for ladies. And uh, you can get that information on our website, 12 Step Spiritual Recovery.com. And uh, let's start changing the world for real. I know for a fact that the impact the 12 Steps has had on my life has changed the world because I wouldn't have written this book and I wouldn't have started these meetings and I wouldn't have sponsored all the people I've sponsored and those people would have perhaps died with our disease. So tell me you can't change the world. You absolutely can change the world once you have your own house in order. So thank you for letting me share and start us off this morning. I'm sure I'll have much more to say later because I'm a talkative guy, but you guys are freaking awesome. And thank you for letting me share this morning. Thank you, Chris. Love you. Thank you, Chris. Love you. Oh. <laughs> Love you too, guys. Appreciate you. That, uh, that last point you made on, you know, it's, it's beginning to be a little bit of a joke with me of how many things I have at the top of the pile, what this has done for me. What's number one, what's number one. My sponsees are beginning to say, I, you know, this is my, I will go, this is my favorite line in the book. This is my, and, uh, and, but truly uh, I believe the number one benefit out of this is for me is the fact that I now have a purpose in life and I feel like a purposeful uh, person. I feel like my life now has meaning. And that's all through the channels of being able to have the ability to give this to other people and watch their lives change <clears throat> and watch the circles of the people around them change. And as you said, you know, that is world changing. You know, we, you, you, there's no magic wand. You can do that for the, you know, just throw it over the globe. But I do have a certain amount of reach. And <clears throat> if I, you know, if I, it, it was taught to me that that was a requirement is do this work and then give it away. That is uh, not an option. 
Um, and and <clears throat> I didn't understand it. You really, you, you really don't, there's no way to understand what's going on here until you actually do it and put yourself into the cycle and to work the process and, and start giving it away. And then, you know, you see what, uh, there's no words I can say besides to sit here and try to convince people that, uh, uh, what this has done. And then also, you know, provide these examples of the other people that have also experienced the same. Uh, and I, that's kind of a mission in my life, uh, is to, uh, I, we did it in mankind and I still am holding on to it that, uh, want to create a world of healing uh, recovery through guiding people towards their true purpose in life. And the tool I use is the 12 steps. Uh, you were saying something too about the, uh, like the, the, and you know, a lot of this is, I found this the other day is that we were in one of the clubhouse meetings and there was people in there that were 12 step people. And there was people in there that were not, and they had no exposure to it. And I really, I really admired this gal stood up and asked to speak. And she said, you know, you are like speaking a completely different language here. You know, in the lingo we toss around once we've been around in here, you know, we we'll say something, you know, well, you know, uh, we did a fourth the other day and, you know, and that's all they say, you know, and they're, people that don't understand they have no everybody's 12 steps they know exactly what that person was talking about but if you're not uh the lingo can kind of be a little confusing too and that kind of uh dawned on me as we as we do things like this that when i just breeze over these terms and i talk about it but but i don't really know any uh, you know i i don't know how to uh to verbalize it in a way that people could feel that uh it's it gets back to where i started is you just have to do it and then you will know what we're talking about. <laughs> uh, but you were talking about the normal people. And that's where I got started on that. The people who don't. And when we say, when I say normal, and this is just purely from being like AA indoctrinated. That's what that is. I'm trying to break it. Uh, but uh, when I say normal people, we talk, what we're talking about is people that in, at the top of the pile haven't had issues with chemical dependency. They didn't struggle with drug addiction. They didn't struggle with, uh, with alcoholism. Uh, just a layer under that is all the other A's, you know, uh, <laughs> the, the behavior ones like uh, the sex <clears throat> addicts anonymous and the gambling anonymous and all of those, uh, you know, and that's where that thing come to me about this. What I, when I read that paragraph in the book and about like, you know, you have what you have alcoholism, you go here, you have drug addiction, what drug? Oh, heroin. You go down there and that whole thing about where uh, we do enough, you know, there's some, there's some validity to divide and conquer. And there's certainly some validity in Alcoholics Anonymous is singleness of purpose, but they're not rigid rules that can't be pushed over. You know, uh, and that's some of what it looks, you know, that is some of what is out there is that, you know, uh, you can't even benefit from this unless you drank a fifth of whiskey a day. You know, it, it won't even work on you. Uh, and 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 I have watched people who have come to 12 step meetings that didn't fit certain people, the mold of the certain people in the group, as far as what your qualifying factor is, uh, get pushed away to get sent off. And no, you can't come here. You have to go someplace else. And my heart just doesn't fall with that at, at all. My, my, my heart says, come here. You know, uh, we have 12 steps that will work for whatever is going on for you. I don't care. Uh, um, Alcoholics Anonymous primary purpose is something to the extent of uh, primary purpose to help alcoholics recover from alcoholism and uh, or recover, help uh, alcoholics recover from alcoholism. Maybe I said the same thing twice, um, but uh, I, my primary purpose is to help people recover from whatever it is that I might be able to help them recover for. I don't know. I know if you do it, your life will get better. Uh, I fully believe with all my heart that uh, you work these 12 steps and, you know, saying your life gets better is a very simple little thing. And you can, you can, you can sell that to anybody. Would you like to have your life better? Well, who says no, right? Uh, I really can sit here right now, though, and somebody texted me this morning and asked me, I get asked how I'm doing, and I really don't know what I would ask for that I don't have. I don't know, you know? I mean, the standard thing is I'd like to have more money, you know? But the only reason I want more money is that I would have more freedom to carry this message. That's the only thing I want more money for. 
-hmm. You know, I would like to have some more lifestyle freedom and yeah, maybe a little more expensive vacation once in a while and uh, replace that old 2004 truck in the driveway. But, uh, but it's primarily to have the freedom to carry this message, uh, you know, at, 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 at like full 100% capacity. Um, and if I could, Dan, I just want to tag on here um, what you're running into on, on Clubhouse and I run into as a therapist every day when I have new people come to my room and we start talking about this solution. Some of them have been to meetings before and they got shut down by some nasty old timer who has not done their work. <laughs> and that's what I try to explain to them. That is clearly a person who has not done their 12 steps. <laughs> That, that came off with that kind of negative energy. But that set such a powerful impression on their brain, on their soul, that they've never gone back. And they've now they have an idea that the 12 steps is associated, pardon the French, with this asshole. You know, that period. And once that's set in their brain, you cannot change it. And this is the same thing we talk about in step three in the book, how people get burned in churches and their, their past experiences spiritually in their family and then they just shut down to the idea that I could have my own spirituality, but you do. Every human being has their own spirituality. That's yours. It's personal, but they associate it with religion now. So, and I know you run into that a lot, but I do want to reach out and just let people know out there who maybe have been to, I'm a victim of that. I don't mind saying it. I came in in 1983 and the people were rough. Anybody that was around in the program in the early 80s knows, man, this was backward times where they yell at you and they tell you to sit down and shut up, take the cotton out of your ears and put it in your damn mouth. And you don't have anything to say, newcomer. And I had one of my patients be told that just the other day, that newcomers have nothing to share. You need to listen. And I understand that philosophy, but Lordy, the minute we start shutting newcomers down from sharing at meetings is the meaning that our movement dies because the blood of our movement is new people coming in. Otherwise, we start patting each other on the back and saying how great we are, and we all get drunk. So I, I just needed to add that uh, to reach out to the people out there who think that they know what the 12 steps is based on a, a certain bad group they went to or a certain individual who was not healthy. No, no, don't let that kill it for you because I'll say this, that was uh, one guy who is in my group right now had that exact experience and was refusing to go. And somehow through the other group members convinced him to come to the TSSR meeting this past week. And his reaction was, that was totally different. That was totally different. And how many times have we heard that? That's all I got. Thanks for letting me add that. I want to hear from other people too. Thanks, Mr. That is exactly it. And that's, uh, if anything wraps up and well, between the groups that I'm involved with, whether it's the TSSR or our AA home group, which operates much like TSSR, it, the people are blown away. They're wow. Uh, there's something here that, that I want. Uh, so yeah, we'll go around here. I'd like uh, to talk on what you guys talked about, if that's okay. Okay. Um, um, hi, I'm Holly. I am one, two. That's something that we say here too, because we don't necessarily have labels of, uh, what we are when we come in. And um, I have a background where I started out in AA. Um, I have a little over 11 and a half years of sobriety myself. And I um, was pretty active in, in the 12 step program my first five years and then kind of got disillusioned and um, uh, kept hearing the same story, seeing a lot of people not really changing. And I was a seeker and I got to a place where, and I felt this even going to church sometimes where I'm like, if I'm not getting filled here, I, I'm not just showing up to just show up. I'm, you know, it just, it, it started to feel, uh, repetitive and mundane, but didn't really propel me forward. And at that point I just kind of stepped away up until about nine months ago when, uh, uh, Dan and I recrossed paths. We met in the other recovery rooms before. And, um, and I listened to one of his podcasts and, uh, and it actually, my sponsor at the time, uh, was on his podcast and they were talking about TSSR. I was listening to her. I'm like, what is this TSSR? What is that? Um, and so he had invited me to be on his podcast for, um, something else for solo date challenges. Uh, one of my missions is to help people break toxic cycles, particularly women. And so that's just my mission and how I play that out in my service work. And, uh, and so we were sitting there talking and before we get on the podcast, I'm like, tell me a little bit more about what this is. And two weeks later, I started with TSSR and, um, 
and the deeper dive that I was looking for that I didn't know at that point was even, that even existed. Um, I was, you know, I, in that five year period where I kind of stepped away from being um, very active in a, I tried Al-Anon, I tried Celebrate Recovery. I was seeking, I was looking for more and better. I just, this didn't exist when I was seeking at the time. So um, it came to me at the right time. I was um, healing and recovery from a, a toxic, toxic marriage where I'm now a thriver of domestic violence and abuse. And so um, this helped me with the codependency and helped me heal from that. Um, the alcohol was not an issue for me at the time when I came into TSSR, but the, um, the step work that I did in AA um, brought an awareness of my codependency. And, and I didn't know that's even what the name was with at that time when I first got re recovery, I knew it was people pleasing. I knew it was perfectionism. I knew it as um, passive aggressiveness. I knew it as like these little item lines of what they were and, um, but I just kind of carried those character defects with me because I didn't know how to heal those. I didn't know how to dig deeper. I didn't know where the root of that came from. And what TSSR has done for me is helped me look at where the root is of those things. And then looking at and challenging my belief system to go, where did that start? Do I believe that today? If not, how do I do something different. And, and it's giving me a framework to look at things differently, to challenge my beliefs, to challenge systems, to challenge things and, and offer me questions. And the healing that I've had in this short amount of time is exponential to anything. And I've been in therapy for 11 years. I've, I've done, and, and I think all modalities are helpful to build on, on how we do our healing. Um, but the, um, the speed at which this healing has happened, the um, intensity at which this healing has happened, the amount of what we call like the promises, which is in the Alcoholics Anonymous you know, book, um, the things that are shifting, what Christopher was talking about, how um, our energy shifts to service work. I, I, I have a servant heart and I always have. However, what it's doing now, the trajectory in 2019, and I was telling this in their meetings, um, I had written that I wanted to start a podcast and I, I had my, I brought my vision board out yesterday and I wrote on there that I want to help others. I want to speak. I want to um, write a book. And this month right now, my podcast is launching the book that I'm collaborating on for healing other people for um, uh, recovery from narcissistic abuse and financial abuse. That book is coming out this month. Um, I am a women's empowerment speaker, keynote speaker next month. So these dreams, these things, and this service work, it's that, that I know my purpose now. And um, I was talking to one of my sponsees and her, her husband said, well, how much, how much are they paying you guys for sponsoring people? Like you do so much work. How, why are, how much are they paying her? And, and I laughed. I was like the, you couldn't put a dollar amount on the energy that I receive from pouring into others and just seeing their lives change that when you can walk another broken soul through this work and see them start receiving these promises to start seeing their life change and that ripple effect of how it affects not only the person that you're in front of that you're helping heal those past wounds but that ripple effect how it, oh, I'm getting chills how it helps those families how it helps that family's family like I want to help break those toxic cycles for generations to come the healing that we do today um, you know, for parents that are out there that are re in recovery, the best thing we could do is heal ourselves. That ripple effect, even if you've done damage to them as children, that ripple effect of what you're doing today to show your recovery, to show how you're changing, you are still affecting them. You're still, you're healing those past wounds. And so this has been life-changing for me and I want to beat the drum for everybody to hear it. I want this recovery for all. I also have this core belief of inclusivity. Um, and this speaks to that, that I don't care what your ism is. You're welcome here. Um, we, we welcome you. And it, it just, if you're on the fence, come check us out, especially like Christopher said, the women's group, we're, we're growing. I mean, all of this, we're growing and we believe that, that this can be anywhere and everywhere. Um, and what Dan read in the book, holy moly, I was crying too. Um, that movement, we are a part of a movement. Um, 
and this is needed throughout the world. So that's, that's what I got for right now. I just had to share. So thank you all. Thank you, Holly. Thanks, and Holly. Good. Love you. Thank you. Thank Holly. you. Love you. And this right like here is shouting too. from, I, this right here is shouting from the mountaintop. That is what we're doing right now, right here is shouting this message from the mountaintop. I do want to really quickly, uh, you guys are the first ones. So there's Holly's has her name on the back of it. Uh, you guys that helped me do this. And, and I really changed my gears on this, that uh, it's not a matter of having participated in TSSR for two years. It's by being present and participating when we hit the two year birthday. So uh, Shannon, did you say you, you ready? Yeah, I wanted to touch on what you and Chris were talking about. So I came from a, another 12 step program and coming in, I mean, there are a lot of like rough people, you know, uh, still sick people in the rooms that kind of want to push you out. They're stuck in their ways and, um, just not willing to give you a chance. Um, I had an old sponsor who was like that as well. Um, just really rough on the edges and unless you're really dedicated and sometimes that's hard for new people, new people coming in just to, you know, push through that, um, that, um, you know, I kind of, it was hard for me to go into the program and have an open mindset like that, um, especially new in recovery. Um, so for me coming into TSSR, we are so welcoming and so loving. Um, and um, that's why you hear people say that, wow, this meeting's so much different. Yes, because we want you here. You know, we aren't the type that's like, oh, well, you know, if you can't stick it out, then you shouldn't be here. No, we want you here. We would love for you to walk through these steps with us because we know how much has changed our lives and um, what it's done for us and how we've seen it do it to other people. Um, and um, the women's group, absolutely. Um, we have a retreat coming, which we have maxed out the people. Um, I think we have three cabins and this is our second time doing it, the four cabins. And this is the second time we've done it. The first year, it was like half of that. And people found out how awesome it was and how much of the bonds we got from it. And then this year, we've maxed it out. So, um, and there's just really great people in this program. So, um, yeah, if you're ever struggling on anything, like uh, drugs and alcohol were my problem. And Holly's, it wasn't. So it's definitely like this, this program can help you no matter what. Um, and that's really just all I wanted to say on that. Thank you, Shannon. Thank you, Shannon. Thanks, Shannon. Love you. Great yeah. stuff. Yeah. And you know, the other, that piece of that blessing of being around here and watching these people come in and like remembering how Shannon arrived, you know, and then knowing her today, <laughs> you know, those, there's no, you know, you don't have to reach for that. You know, it's not a stretch. It's uh, it's, it's very visible and, and Shannon is just, you know, you think it's a completely different person. Mm -hmm. You know, if you run into them back then and you run into them now, you're not sure you're seeing the same human being. Uh, who wants to go next? It's Holly and April. I kind of grabbed up some people. I really didn't know how to go about it, but I uh, I did. And I look here and I've got even numbers of three men and three females. That's uh, uh, <laughs> males and females. That's, that turned out kind of cool. And uh, a little mix of people who come through different channels and different things too. So uh, um, I didn't think about that until sitting here looking. Hi, April. Hi. <laughs> I'm so happy to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Um, Oh, awesome. I can't wait to get that. Um, so I am one too without an ism, I guess. <laughs> um, I come from a background of uh, uh, abuse in all aspects of life, uh, verbal, uh, physical, mental, sexual, um, you name it. I've been through it, uh, unfortunately. But you know what? That was then. This is now. Um, I actually um, I come also from a background of family members that are alcoholics. Um, my father's an alcoholic. My brother's an alcoholic. 
and my husband's an alcoholic. And I started uh, seven years ago. I went to Al Anon. I can't believe it's been that long. <laughs> um, so, yeah, seven years ago, I started going to Al Anon. And um, because I couldn't, I couldn't, I felt like I needed help controlling my husband. <laughs> and I uh, found out that no, that's not what Al Anon's for. You know, it's to help you fix you. Because when you're with somebody that has um, issues uh, with addiction, no matter what it is, um, there's no you controlling them. Um, once you start taking care of yourself, you're like, who is this person? And then once you're, you know, a person that has an addict becomes sober, you're like, who is this other person? Because I completely lost myself in my addict and um, alcoholic and I, I needed to find myself. So I started going to Al-Anon and in the midst, my husband um, actually found sobriety. Um, it'll be three years actually this August for him, which is amazing. And, um, but I, I was just like, I went through depression. I went through everything trying to figure out, you know, okay, so now I have to start over because I did the 12 steps when he was in our, when he was in the madness and like, and now I have to be like, what do I do now? And I was, I too was searching for more because I felt like after I did the 12 steps in Al-Anon that I'm like, can this just be it? This can't be it. You know, there has to be something else. And then my husband actually was doing the 12 steps in uh, TSSR. And um, I saw this change in him that was just so much more. And I'm just like, oh my God, can I have some of that? I want some of that, please. And uh, he's just like, oh yeah, you know, he really wanted me to. And I just, I got into it. And uh, I thank God for my sponsor, Dan, which is here. So um, who has helped me through and it was hard going for a long time, but um, I won't say that I am like a hundred percent perfect because I don't think anybody is, but with the 12 steps, it's like, I can sit back and actually um, breathe and think before I respond. You know, um, I have so much more calm than I've ever had before. Um, I don't, I've never felt this way, you know, um, it's like, it's just this calmness over me that helps me to um, realize when I'm um, acting or reacting instead of acting, you know? Um, and if I can't figure something out, I call my sponsor. <laughs> if I can't, uh, or, I, or, or phone a friend, um, somebody else in the group, you know, it, it doesn't matter if they've been through what you've been through. Anybody in the group that gives you their number, they're more willing to help you with whatever. And sometimes it's just an ear and it is amazing. Um, and I'm, I'm that way too. You know, I have a, a sponsee and it's, it's a wonderful to share this with, with uh, my sponsee. I struggle, but you know what? It was my first sponsee. So I think everybody struggles with their first sponsee. They're like, Wait a minute, what do I do? And then what do you do? Call your sponsor. <laughs> what do I do? I don't know. So um, anyway, I just, I absolutely love this. And I'm so grateful for Christopher and Dan and actually everybody here, because when we have our meetings on Thursday night, it is just like, it's, we call it juiced up, man. It's just so juicy. It's just wonderful sharing everything. So thank you all for now. <laughs> Heck yeah. I love you, April. Thanks, April. Well said, April. April. That was awesome. Love you. Uh, love you guys. You know, the book, uh, and we talked about uh, <clears throat> there's a, a gathering happening, you know, where these souls are finding their way to this. And and that that's really cool to me to watch, like, how some of those things happen, you know, because, um, you know, uh, Marshall, April's husband, you know, bumped in and he come from, you know, no, you know, some miles away from our home group and ended up being attracted to our direction. And then, you know, this ripple effect right there is a, is an example of what I'm talking about. And that's even on a bigger level, because even if uh, the people around you don't do any work, they still get better. And then if they do, and they say this like April did and said, Hey, I want some of that. Uh, don't, don't hog up the juice. Uh, and, and then actually take the steps to do that. You know, they're not, you know, that's, 
um, you know, and, and this is not meant to knock any of the, the other 12 step programs. That's not what I'm doing here. Uh, it's not there. And, and just to go on there, there is nothing in this that conflicts with 12 step philosophy. There's nothing in here that conflicts with anything for the, uh, the purists. Uh, well, that's another uh, misunderstanding out there is that we're doing something different, you know, that it, that that's a conflicting way of doing it. Um, I was going to say, jump in real quick. Um, I recommend to anybody, anybody, anybody that has is, is living with um, or a friend, family member that is uh, dealing with alcohol or uh, narcotics, anything with an ism um, to please do Al-Anon, you know, because that does help. Um, uh, I don't think I would be where I'm at today if I didn't do those first, I, because it helps me understand my addict a lot better, you know? So I just wanted to say that. Yeah. And this is a deep dive is what we talk about. You know, we say that over again, that there's another level of, of how deep you want to dig. And, uh, you know, and, and I, I had the similar thing, you know, I had a sponsor four years before I met Christopher and, uh, and I got some relief from alcoholism for a period of time through working the steps with that guy. And I am forever grateful for him. And I don't know that I would have been prepared to meet Christopher had I not had that framework. You know, the whole thing about the, uh, what we had to go through in our lives in order to get where we're at today. Uh, there's two different, two different rooms in my life have posed a question. Uh, we have, have a little close group of men that do it. And then on, I was on clubhouse other night and they said, if you could change anything about your past life, what would you change? And, uh, I, 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 I think I had to do everything I did to get here. Mm -hmm. uh, chain, trying to wish something away in the past could have changed my tra trajectory and I wouldn't have landed here. Uh, and we all have that. We all, whether if it's an alcohol thing or anything, the, you know, the whole TSSR, you know, I'll be careful saying this, but the whole TSSR thing is just as I read that our souls have become affected, uh, infected by doing this thing called life. It's not because you had abuse of this. It's not because you had that. Uh, it, it's, it's, you're going to bump into this. Just that is like, that is what life is going to bring into your car, car. Very few people, if anybody are able to escape that clean, you know, uh, I don't meet too of them, too many of them that escape it clean. And, uh, the, uh, this gathering, I felt it from the beginning. I felt like I was part of it. I loved the way, you know, Holly come, you know, boom, boom, boom through this funny little hop through the mulberry bush to end up landing here. You know, Ross did a similar kind of thing where he's got his whole uh, little steps through here and everybody's got their way. They found their way here. And uh, I almost like to uh, maybe, rec you know, somewhat, and I do, I guess I, I do record those stories in my podcast, uh, but just like the short story part of it about like, what was your journey from boom, boom, boom quickly and how, how you landed here. Uh, so Dan, let me add on to that. You know, we have a tradition in TSSR that anybody that has addiction, <clears throat> in alcoholism or other drugs uh, should first do their 12 steps out of the Narcotics Anonymous book or AA book so that they can learn the terminology of what actually makes their disease tick. And now, on the other hand, I get a lot of people come to me and say, but I want this deeper level recovery right off the bat, which there's nothing wrong with that. I think it's part of our programming, which is what we're all about in TSSR is stripping away these false voices, all these people that have taught us these things about the way we look at the world, the way we react, the way we feel. It's just habitualized. I mean, that's how we are as human creatures. We just habitualize these things like cats and dogs do and repeat our patterns over and over and over until something comes along to help us break it. And so we have this teaching, I, I believe, of either or. And there's this competition like, you know, well, this is a, this is taking the place of this or this is trying to replace that. And it's like, no, it's more like Dan talks about add to. This is an add to thing that is an option. And so I would never deny someone the option if they wanted and said, hey, look, we need to go through the Alcoholics Anonymous book to help you recover from your disease. But if you also would like... <laughs> Because essentially, if you're getting sponsored by me or Dan, that's what you're going to get. You're going to get the TSSR deeper level stuff right off the bat. And I'll tell you the result. The result is we're having people in our group who are one and two years sober 
who are walking this path as if they've got 20 years of recovery. And nobody, anybody that meets them will say that, say, oh, I had no idea you were only in for a couple of years. I thought you'd been around forever because they're getting that deeper healing right off the bat. And we even have some old timers coming into our group now who are talking about, you know, well, in my sponsorship lineage, we really didn't get deep into the family stuff and, and, you know, all my, my core history. And I'm like, well, how can you do an inventory while ignoring what happened to you for the first 18 years of your life or whatever, until you took your first drink or drug. And that's literally the way the program was structured when I came in in the early 80s is people would start with their stories from, I took my first drink at 15 and here we go. And, and not even discuss what led them to take that first drink, the 15 years of experience on this planet that hurt them and, and, and in some way impacted them. And, and these old timers are saying, you know, this is completely revolutionary to me. I'm getting this right off the... It's not necessary that you have to wait to get this deeper level recovery is what I'm saying. As long as you're in the book and you're learning your AA uh, terminology and NA terminology to heal your disease, if you have those diseases, you can certainly use uh, extra sources. The same as if somebody might be reading a book on Buddhism at the same time they're doing their steps or somebody might be reading a book on codependency and family um adult children of alcoholic stuff at the same time they're healing. You don't have to wait <laughs> to get deeper level of healing, but it's not an either or thing. And, and we encounter so many people who take that reaction. And I'm like, I think that's part of our programming, especially here in America, Pepsi or Coke, Pepsi or Coke, you know, either or, you know, it's just bullshit. <laughs> that's all I wanted to say. Thanks. Thanks, Chris. Thank Love you, Chris. Chris. Uh, I've been reminded time and time again, and the, one of the beauties about doing this thing together and the whole sponsorship thing is that I don't see me very well. And I fall into the trap of black and white all the time. I will call my sponsor, Christopher, and say, look, I got these two options, you know, and he's like, no, you really have some bunch of options in between that black and white, too. <laughs> you know, it's not just this or that. Uh, uh, Ross, uh, going to give him an opportunity to talk about what this thing is. Uh, well, I'll just say, give him an opportunity to talk about whatever he wants to talk about. Hi, um, since we're on YouTube, my name is Michael Harris Ross. Um, I go by Ross just because it stuck around. I was born on 2-14-1973. I believe my ego wants to tell me the book came out on 2-14, but I don't think so. Somewhere right around there though. Thank God. It's a fucking miracle that I'm sitting here today. I was in 11-11-18 uh, and came into the rooms and I was, uh, I blamed everything on everything, everybody except what I could see about me. Um, and I somehow was not uh, able to stop drinking or drugging since I am an alcoholic and an addict. Um, and I'm very grateful for my first, first sponsor um, who spent some time with me during those months and just kept telling me, hang on. Hang on, man. Just stay. There's a new dive coming out. There's a new book coming out. God shot myself here. There's a new book coming out. It's coming out. I'm like, when's it coming? Out? It's coming out next month. And then it would be like, it was not too far from that, you know, like little by little. And it came out. And um, oh my goodness gracious, I love these emotions today. Um, and it came out and um, just like normal, I let it sit there because it was way too big for me to see at first <laughs> until it was. And then I opened up the first page, this reminds me of a poem, um, and uh, I couldn't get enough of it. Um, I finished the steps. I finished the book reading the words and doing the work. And I think it was seven or eight amends in 68 days. Um, you give me an opportunity to talk about TSSR. I've been trying to just breathe the whole time. You guys have been juicing me up over here. I love this. Um, so I'm doing, the, I'm doing the 68 days I finished the work. Uh, somewhere around 68, 70 something days. Um, I was free. I was free. I was free. It gave me an opportunity. Okay, so my ego is my disease. Um, so I, I really, because I was the best thing there ever was. And money was my God. And I was so successful until I wasn't. And then I was so successful until I wasn't. 
Um, and my ego drove every single ounce of fear, anger, worry, judge. All that was built into the fact that, no, it's, I'm just okay. Let me keep shoving it down and let me just keep moving on. Um, loss was very big for me in this. Uh, so in this book, it opened up that idea of, of uh, tragedy and loss. I lost a lot of my family. Um, it was real deep for me. So what had my ego protected me because it's a protector from me feeling any kind of guilt, shame, or remorse. So I needed to keep seeing more words and I needed to keep just because the who, what, when, where, why, how is the reason why I needed to just, just see the words here in the book like this, because I was consistently, even though I was still reading and ready, I was still trying to convince myself that it's not real. Until the gentle reader, my beloved reader, the way that Christopher talks to me, I was being, I, I, had a, I, have a, I had a beautiful sponsor and I had a beautiful sponsor in the book, which is Christopher telling, telling me what I wasn't having conversations with on the phone or I wasn't having conversations with in person. Or when I'd see someone that was, excuse my terminology, crusty in the other world, to talk me out of it saying that you're going to come off this juice high and, you know, hush or, or trust me, even in my beloved group, I was told to sit down and shut the fuck up. And my answer was, fuck you. I found some happiness and I'm going to share this motherfucking miracle with the world. Damn it. So I needed to see here in this beautiful book, I'm a little jealous, Dan. I don't have the one that says whatever yours says. Um, so I, um, I needed to see, like, when I was fighting it, I needed him to see, like, it's okay. Fight it, beloved reader. Well, how about this idea? I mean, anything that I try to talk out of, Christopher would be like, it's just okay. Well, wait a minute. It's just okay. Trust the process and just keep reading. And then all of a sudden, the book was not big anymore. And oh, my God, the book was talking to me. And oh, my God, the meetings, which is still on my refrigerator, which is my sponsee Shannon's sobriety date, March 14th, 2019, miracle started. And here we are today. And now I know the book and the book knows me. Someone very sweet said to me. Well, you started over, Ross. And I thought that was really sweet that they said that. And my answer is, uh, I started. Pure, simple answer. I started. I started my journey. I didn't start over. I started my life because of what this angel put in his 31 years while well, I was writing the book, 35, okay, but 31 years um, of his life, of his, by books today that I can understand, I can see, I can hear, I can, my eyes are open, Dalai Lama, the Tao, uh, this is in here. This is in here. This is for anybody that, that can just, and if you don't know how to read, Call me. I'll fucking read it. If you're willing to do the work, we'll podcast it. It doesn't matter. It's 1015. I think we're going until 1030. I've been trying to spread out my juice some. This is a miracle. This is the, I shout it from the rooftops. I have a fucking, and it's so beautiful, Dan, that you po pointed out that first couple pages. I want to start a movement, man. Because that's exactly when I grab my glasses and put my buck right here. I opened it up, highlighted. I want to start a movement. It was beautiful that you said that. I want to start a movement. So my ego is like, oh, wow, there's something new in the beginning. Oh, I could be a part of it. And I'm like, oh, my God, this is my purpose. I have much more purpose than just the AA purpose of passing it on. It's to the whole world. And when you combine the combination, of the, the big book is beautiful to me today. I love, I tear up reading the big book because my eyes are opened 
because you open them and the love and the companionship and the honesty and the, and the, the trust, because I have big trust issues growing up that I was able to understand and abandonment, all these things that were opened up for me and that I can work through and then just be okay. Are people like you two in my video right here that I see Holly and Dan, the love for another human being that's real. You know, none of this would have been possible for me. Nothing. I wasn't staying sober, guys. Just for me. Whether I wanted to hear it or not, I don't know. But Chris didn't give me an option. He answered all my disbeliefs. And he led me to you guys. And today, something that would never have been me, ever, just to let you know. I started an I the ego. I, I started, there's a meeting at my house. <laughs> On Sunday, started December the 7th, called the Misfits, TSSR Misfits, December the 7th. We're moving into a building. It's been my dream since I read it. I was almost done with the book the first time. I read it for, I've read it quite a bit uh, because it's my, it was my go-to when my sponsor was ill in the hospital. And I couldn't call him. I'd just read a, sta I'd read a chapter. I'd read it. But I started, started with the meeting, and it never would be in my, my I, it's, it's been my dream to have a meeting. My whole times, so I always, it's my whole dream to start a meeting. I've now included my, one of my best friends in the program. We're starting the meeting together. And that would have never happened. So we're taking it to a building to pass on our message. This is our message. I would have never done that. That's not me. It's not in my DNA. Christopher found a way to talk to my disease and reboot my system and i started my life when i read the first page and i'm ever grateful for my spurt i'm always be grateful for my first sponsor or every single teacher i've had and i'm gonna have a lot more i'm just gonna have a lot more and i'm so grateful to be a part of this purpose with you guys and if there was a teleprompt if we were watching the super bowl right now and it was still covid OK, the TV, our, our screen would be in the middle and 5000 screens would be up here. This message is spreading, spreading fast, so fast. So buckle up and get on the ride. I love you guys. Thank you. Love you, Ross. Very well uh, said, brother. That was awesome. Thanks, Ross. Yeah, thank you, Ross. And Ross did just exactly what, you know, and it, and, it, and that's reminiscent of what the original 12-step meetings in Alcoholics Anonymous started in people's living rooms, out and grew the living room, going to go out and find space for everybody. And uh, and that message in the, what it says here in, in, in some of the paragraphs, it says, you know, do this work, start a meeting in your town, uh, gather up some people. Um, this is, you know, this works for everybody and you can, you can have this too. Uh, it, uh, <clears throat> I get the human nature part of it of like not, but I, on the other hand, uh, I, it blows me away that people will reject uh, these operating principles and reject this, even though their life is in such a pickle. It's, it's, it's uh, our typical of a alcoholic of, you know, just doing anything they can not to get better. You know, they want to, they will tell you, I want to get better. I want to, you know, but then they won't do the things it takes to do it. Uh, and, you know, I've heard that stole this from another, that the steps, these steps look like something that is set out and met and designed to punish you. Uh, when you read the short forms that they hang around in 12 step rooms, uh, everybody, I don't think there's an exception on the world that has a misunderstanding of what that work is when they read that. Uh, but that's not what it is. And you know, I'll say this a hundred times too, that I've never met anybody that did the work and said they wish they hadn't have. Um, everybody does it. And, and that does it ends up uh, talking about one, how really, how relatively simple it is. I mean, it's work. Don't get me wrong, but uh, it's not what you think it is. <laughs> it is not what you think it is. Uh, and uh, two, I very seldom see anybody turn their back on it after having done it. You know, 
uh, you know, there's some times like what Holly talked about, about not being fed in certain areas, you know, and, and was not growing. And I can understand that because once you do this, you become addicted to growing. Uh, you want more. And if you're in an environment that is not providing you that, you almost have to, for your own self, go find what you're looking for. Um, it, that's really what this is designed to do. Uh, you know, it's a launch pad to allow you to, to open up, like Ross was talking about, opening up your, uh, open up your heart to be able to receive the other lessons that are in the universe sitting there waiting for you. Um, I couldn't, I couldn't let them in until I, until I did this. Um, I don't have a hard ending point today. So uh, I know that we talk and uh, it prompts, uh, somebody says something and it prompts something new. Uh, I made a mistake and set up a new spot here instead of at my Zoom table. And uh, and uh, normally I've got a notepad and I didn't, I don't have one today. That, that must've been the way it was supposed to be. Um, Ross is uh, <laughs> two year. I think I pulled up with Shannon's too. Uh, I seldom make myself one, huh. it seems, but I did this time. And, oh, yeah. Thank you, Dan. And, of course, uh, Christopher's. And what I thought was funny is that when I turned it over and looked at it, it looks like it has an eye in it, like an eyeball. I can't get it on there because he had the eyes to see that this was what it was and uh, followed up that dream behind it. And uh, and it took a lot of dedication. I was alongside Christopher for a piece of it, uh, a good piece of it, I will say. And uh, and and I learned firsthand the dedication that he had and, and uh, the total commitment to really everything else in his life was put on the back burner uh, in order to to create this this book. And I offered for somebody's consideration the other day that the steps in the Alcoholics Anonymous Big Book, I'm not sure you can do them by yourself. If you were just on a desert island and you had that book and you read those steps, I'm with a sponsee right now that's told me three or four, 10, 1200 times. I've read that book before. and uh, But he's not getting the interpretation that I can give him. And there's something weird about that, that this... Uh, that this book came out and, and it almost to, in my perception requires a guide in order to take you through it. You know, somebody had to teach that person what this work really was. And then, you know, you just, you just don't get it out of the book. That is one thing that's in this book. It is the step-by-step -step, do this. Uh, it's still recommended to have a guide. You, there's just no replacement in the world for uh, a support group and a sponsor. There just isn't. Uh, but it's in here, and you could do this workout on Desert Island as long as you had a pen and a pencil. Uh, and uh, I guess you could write it in the sand. Uh, so it's it is actually the work in the in the in the actual process that that. Christopher had picked up from teachers and picked up on his own. And, and, you know, when another cool thing about it is, is, you know, we, you can add to it in your own thing. There's no violation of that. I started doing some things that aren't in there. You know, I have some little quirks and some little ways that when you go through the work with me, uh, there's a certain, you know, I have some things I like to do and I found them effective, you know, and, 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 you know, I wouldn't be surprised that, uh, you know, we get this moving off the ground and there would be a lot of maybe addendums to it. You know, you have the basic framework here, but look, we're doing this too and we're doing that too. And and uh, I say, you know, wring every bit of the juice out of the process I can get because, it, you know, this thing has brought me to some, uh, some understanding or some relationship, some reliance upon a higher power. Uh, and if that higher power rang a doorbell right now and said, hey, Dan, I'm here to get everything that, that's defeating you. Give me all your defects, everything that's a problem for you. Uh, I'm here to get them. Uh, I'm of the mind today that I'm going to give them all to him. You know, I'm not wanting to hold on to any. Uh, so that's that deeper dive thing of, of being able to do this work at a level that you really take a big bite out of your spiritual sickness with one go around, you know, and, and I have worked these steps a few times uh, now since being, since meeting Christopher uh, and there's always more and there's, um, 
it's not a process that will stagnate uh, and, and end up uh, being where you've gone as far as you can go. There, there's, there's always more and, and, and deeper things and more life experience that piles up on you that maybe you uh, need to process through this work again. Um, Shannon, you got your hand up? Yeah, I just wanted to touch on that for a second. First of all, um, you mentioned that I am not the same person that I was when I walked into this program. And I would absolutely have to agree with you. I am much more, um, we'll say I got my confidence back from this program. Um, that's, I could say that in so many different words, it's not funny. Um, but, um, this deeper dive that you're talking about. So I came from another program and I did my steps out of the AA book and I love that it, it saved my life. Okay. Um, but there are certain things that we do in this program that we, that I didn't get from doing my steps out of the AA book. Um, and, um, it just, it, this deeper dive you're talking about, um, it, it definitely opened me up to, um, I'm not going to go, I guess, into detail as to which ones we didn't do. Cause I, it could have been my sponsor, um, that didn't do it. Um, and I love her for that. She walked me through the book and, and helped save my life. But, um, this one, this TSSR helped me, um, identify so much about myself. Definitely did a deeper four step that I've ever done. And, um, um, let me know all about my, you know, traits and things. So I don't repeat them. Um, and, um, that's huge for me because, um, considering that I am an addict and alcoholic, clearly my patterns have not been great. Um, and I don't want to repeat them. Um, so, um, that's what I, the biggest thing that I got out of this program is knowing myself, knowing not to repeat things and my character defects. And to um, my sponsor, who is in the room, who I love dearly, um, that's another thing that I got from this program, not only to have the most awesome relationship with my sponsor, who I can call, um, and I love this part. I try and sell him on some things sometimes, and he's like, are you trying to sell me? Like, this man knows me sometimes better than I know myself, which is amazing. Then if I'm off my, you know, not in a great mindset that I can call on my sponsor or a bunch of the women in the fellowship. So, um, I, have, you know, all these great people in my life that I never had before, you know, um, and that, um, uh, gosh, I can't even say enough what this program has done for me. Um, besides what it's done for myself, I got, um, and that was huge for me because um, I couldn't even talk to my kids. Um, and um, so that's huge for me. Um, I, uh, and the, people say material things, which Chris was mentioning. Um, you know, when I, this year, when I got my taxes back, which I finally got, money wasn't even an issue. It was just like I was able to um, buy my kids things, but it's more about the love that I'm able to give my kids this time. You know, I'm able to go and spend time with them and the, while we're doing things. That's the main point. Um, it's not about, hey, you know, let's go buy something so I can buy your love. It's that I'm able to give them love. Um, and um, uh Jeez. Um, <laughs> uh, there's just so much this problem has given me that uh, <laughs> it's hard to put into formula, into words. Um, oh, my sponsees. Um, you know, just what they have showed me, you know, like it's me kind of reminding me of when I, to my lights have turned on, you know, their lights are starting to turn on. And, um, there is no amount of money that you can could give me to to help someone through this program, you know, and um, it's an amazing feeling that that they can have that relationship too with you and just know that they trust you through this whole process. And um, 
they are able to, oh gosh, um, I don't know, just to see their lights turn on is amazing. Um, and I guess that's all I really have. Thanks, guys. <laughs> That's Thanks, awesome, Shannon. Shannon. Love you, Shannon. Oh, yeah. Oh, Shannon, and thank you. Yeah, that connection that happens, you know, through this process is also one of those miracles that's an intangible, you know, uh, that was not what I was aiming at when I got here. I didn't have any kind of sights set on, you know, having this beautiful relationship that I have with my sponsor that, that wasn't, that wasn't even, wasn't even close to being in the picture I had, you know, and, and then, the next thing is, is as you pass it on the same thing and, you know, your sponsees do become mirrors. You know, every time I take somebody through the steps, it's almost like me going through again. Uh, it's, you know, it's not quite as deep, but it's, it's, it's that same kind of thing where, you know, we're talking about something that's going on with them and I'm going, Oh yeah, I see that. And then me too. Uh, and I didn't until they started talking about it, you know, and it's, it's a mirror kind of process. Oh, uh, Go around again at least once and uh Ross. Hey, I'm Ross. Uh, hey, I'm Ross. I'm one two. Um I was gonna say uh beautiful stuff here. You guys are warming my heart today, and I just wanted to reach out to anyone that might see this six months, one year, fifty years from now. Um, I'm very grateful to be a part of this meeting today and thank you for what everyone said. Um, I wanted to, I was thinking about something while we were talking. Um, the big book has for anyone that's done the steps before, uh, I, am um, just going to let you know about the pages compared to the book. So the big book has 570, my book has big book has 575 pages. So if I take the 12 and 12, I think there might be a hundred pages. In it. Let's just say there's 75 in there. So I'm going to round 575 to 6, 675, 650. And then I'm going to add, um, and then I'm going to say, uh, uh, drop the rock. Um, let's say another 100, 750. Uh, if you were to look at those three, and you might need one more, four books to, as you go through the sequence, uh, it's all right here. So just give yourself three months, even if you're on an awesome program today and you're killing it and you're excited, just give it a shot. It's less pages than all four of those books. And uh, it has everything that all those have in there. Um, plus, you might be able to help somebody inside your family. You never know. Um, and I really liked what Dan said. Um, I really like when you say that. Um, I've never met anybody that's done the work and said, man, that sucked. <laughs> it just doesn't happen. So uh, I was just going to say, I love you guys. And um, as Christopher's words, trust the process. And um, I can't wait for you to watch the video, everybody. So um, it's going to be just okay. As long as we just stay together. Love you. Thank you. Love you, Ross. Thanks, Thanks Ross. Ross. Yeah, I thought I was just going to remain muted because I thought April was uh, just jumping right in and I was going to let her. <laughs> I'll jump in. I'll beat. <laughs> oh, buddy. Um, yeah, you know, I know my, I, this program has just been wonderful for me. And I, I really feel awkward saying program. You know, because I, I don't feel like it's a program, even though you do the 12 steps, it's a process to um, rid yourself of egos. And um, I didn't know I had an ego until I started <laughs> this, you know, because it's like uh, I find myself, you know, getting into like old habits and I'm like going, wait a minute. Nope. Stop. You know, and I, I wouldn't have done that before. I just would just dive right into whatever I was used to doing, right? And now I'm like, wait a minute, no, no, okay. Um, I also have a addiction of spending money. Uh, that's an addiction, but it was a self-seeking, self-soothing addiction. Um, you know, every time my husband would get drunk, I'd be like, okay, so let's spend a hundred dollars. 
you know, but then when the thing came in the mail or I, I got home with whatever I bought, you know, it's like I would hide what I would buy, you know, and or to, because I, I think I was hiding for myself. I didn't want to see the fact that, you know, I, I, I spent money again on things that I didn't need. Uh, I probably will just sit in a corner, um, you know, so it's like I, I ask myself those things now. It's like, am I going to use it? Is it going to sit there? Is it going to collect dust? How many times do you think I'm really going to wear it? Do I really need that uh, skein of yarn that is 50 cents and normally costs $5? No, I don't because I have a whole freaking wall of towels. Just kidding, Ross. <laughs> so anyway, um, you know, and my family members have noticed the change. They're like, man, you just seem so much lighter. And it's like most of the time I feel like I'm lighter. You know, I feel like I'm walking on air. Um, I try not to walk on air because, I mean, you have to stay grounded to, to realize what, you know, you have and what you're doing and, um, you know, just giving yourself to others. And, um, you know, I try to invite people in and you can't, you can't force people. But when they see the change in you, they're like, man, like me, I want some of that. Can I have some of that? It's like, okay, yes, here, let me show you, uh, you know, what uh, you're looking at what you're going to get and it can be even a thousand times better, you know? So um, I just, I can't say enough about this, um, the Christopher's book and, uh, you know, the meetings that I go to and I invite people to come, but, you know, I can't, um, when, you, when you say you can um, lead a duck to water, but you can't make them drink. So you know, I'm just blessed that I'm here and uh, that my husband found this program so he could share it with me um, because I don't, I never would have thought I would ever feel this good. So I thank you, you know, and uh, I hope somebody gets something out of this and you'll join us in our next meeting. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks April. April. Love you. Awesome. Yeah, that is. It's join us. And, uh, yeah. Join, love the you guys comes from the you know the original stuff there's a thing in there that to, to invite you to come join us and uh and we're doing that here today um and I, one of the other things i like to say is uh and some things just come out you know that one two thing it just come out you know it's no different to me preparing for this podcast and the uh, book come out and 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 that's a beautiful thing to allow myself to just flow rather than forcing things and fighting stuff and trying to manage things in the way I need them to be. Uh, but there, we said, I, one day I said, there are no rules and we're going to break them all. You know, and that's a cool thing to have here is that we, we really don't have uh, limiting factors and, and old traditions that cause us, you know, there's things that we should follow because it's been shown in history that this is a working program and that kind of thing. But uh, um you know, having the ability to sponsor uh, across genders is brought stuff into my life that I wouldn't have had. And I don't and I probably would have never done that if it hasn't been for TSSR. You know, it, it opens up and puts and feeds my soul from a perspective that I just simply don't have the capacity to to experience. But I get that through here and this whole thing of us doing it together uh, across that across the all no rules. Uh, we get to do it. We get to do this thing. And I know it's like a, what is a better word than like, cause that's what we use all the time to say this program this program. And I know that can be a little off putting to those who are already skeptical that like it, you know, there's the old age old thing about cults and, and other things. And, you know, people think I just was listening to a podcast yesterday where some guy called in and his sister was struggling with drugs and alcohol and, uh, and they said, you know, the guy made a blanket statement. He said that, well, you, we know that the 12 steps are out there, but we also know that that is a Christianity based program. And it's like, no, <laughs> it's not. Uh, and he just said it, you know, luckily the host actually uh, was, was answering a question. I was wondering what he was going to do with it. And, and he, he did a really good job saying, uh, I think he said, I do not know personally. I had no personal experience, but I'm pretty sure that's not the case. Um, so those misperceptions out there about what 12 steps is and what it's not in this program word and the language, but, you know, we got this darn English language to deal with and it's got words and they're not all ideal. Uh, but, uh, yeah, whatever, uh, process program, I don't know what the best thing to, 
It's a, it's a lifestyle. That's what it is. Bill says it, it's a design for living. Mm-hmm. That's designed for living. Holly? Yes, I've got some thoughts. Uh, thank you all for everybody that shared. This is Holly. And um, oh, man, uh, my brain is reeling because of all the um, just beautiful juice that everybody shared. Um, one, th- several like things that we say every once in a while that I've heard come along the way is that um, addiction or yeah, uh, connection is the opposite of addiction or addiction is the opposite of connection. And, and what we have here is this opportunity to connect with other people um, on this deeper level that people that are walking this. But I also want to invite like it was on my heart when we were talking about people getting to um, if you're listening to this six months from now, a year from now, whatever that um, if you're sitting here going, I want this in my community. And, and I don't live in Louisville, Kentucky. Um, if you want to reach out to any of us here, I'm going to throw it out there, but at least for me, I can speak for me is that if you need me to hop on a zoom to be in your living room with you, to lead a meeting, to get it started until you get the legs underneath you, I'm willing to do that. Um, because I, I believe not, we were talking about program. This is a movement. Like I get chills when I feel that. And every time I correspond with Christopher, I say, I believe in this movement. I believe, and I'm going to cry. Like I believe (laughs) that we all need this. Um, And so like, I listened to a lot of different people, you know, Dan and I are both big on um, other resources. Step 11 talks about, and other things, like not just this little box that we're in and other things, because we believe that we don't know it all, (laughs) that that there are other things and there are going to be other people like ourselves that are, that are digging deeper and that have these, these tools that they're willing to share that we're open to that. So, um, Gabber Mate, is that how you say his name? Um, talks a lot about trauma and talks a lot about addiction in relation to trauma and that, so much of uh, the basis of addiction, and it doesn't matter what that looks like to you. It could be addiction to electronics and TV. Uh, there's a, a new uh, Netflix on that. Um, it could be addiction to shopping. It could be addiction to porn. It could be addiction to, it doesn't matter, gum, sugar, whatever it is. A lot of it is the basis of trauma. And while this is not a trauma recovery program by any means, it's a deeper dive. Um, and what Ross was talking about, about like the dear gentle reader, as I was reading this book, um, there's a lot out there in trauma cycles or trauma circles in recovery, talking about reparenting. This book helped help me in that genre. Like if you're looking for something to help you with reparenting, if you're, you know, if you're like, Oh, what's another book for reparenting this, I believe is that like, as I was reading it, it, um, he spoke the words that I wish my parents would have said to me. Mm. He spoke to my child <laughs> to <laughs> allow me to be me, allow me to be seen. Um, so if you're in that place of your un- uncovering, because what I didn't know is that I thought that what I was experiencing was normal because it was my normal. I didn't know any different. I didn't know until I knew that whatever I was taught may not be normal, you know, until you're out of your bubble, until you start experiencing these addictions that you realize are now addictions that because of my life is powerless, because my life has become unmanageable until that happens. I don't believe it to be an addiction. I believe it to be my normal (laughs) until I uncovered that it was not normal at that point. Then I became a seeker of, okay, what is normal and normal is going to look different to everybody, but you get to discover what your normal is, Um, but you get to discover what your core self is. But this book helps you get to that. Um, And this community supports you while you're doing it. And I needed, I needed the community connections, one of my top core values. So, um, that is what I needed. And so that's why I encourage you um, if you want this in your community to build connection um, that I'll be glad to lead a meeting for you. Um, I'll be glad to reach out and and do that. Um, And then we we both listened to Jordan Peterson. He was talking, um, we were listening to a podcast and the gentleman asked him about 12 steps. Now he act, he directed it towards AA, I believe, but his, Jordan Peter's response was like, um, this program, a pro, 12 step programs work, right? And, but also he went on to say, they don't harm you. Like depression medicine, anxiety medicine, um, other medicines that people do to get off drugs and alcohol and things like that could, I'm not saying they do, but could harm you where doing this 12 step program work 
enhances your life. It doesn't make more problems. Generally, it enhances your life if you actually do the steps as they go. If you have a sponsor that walks you through, if you get into a community, these steps enhance your life. They're not going to harm you. And where we can't say that there's other recovery things that you can do that could possibly harm you. And so that's the encouragement where we talked about if somebody does the step work and truly does it, most people don't go, I wish I didn't do that. But also if you're in this place of, I'm not really sure, know that it's not going to harm you further because if people are past trauma experience, we're, we're in it. Like I, I'm recovering from CPTSD. So I'm hyper vigilant of like, I don't know if I want to dip my toe in that water because I've dipped my toe in other waters before and I got harmed. And so I'm going to shield up and I want to protect myself. And I want to encourage you is that if you step into these waters, especially with this group and you connect with us, we're going to hold you close. We're going to bring you in. We're going to lead you and guide you with love because that's what our intent is, um, that we want love and recovery for all. Um, we want you to be able to connect with your childlike spirit, not what I think your child should be, what you get to discover your child is. Um, so that was on my heart. So thank you. I love you all. And I'm grateful for you. I was about Thanks, Holly. Thank you, Holly. Holly. Thanks, Holly. Thank you. Love you. I had a knee jerk reaction to unmute myself real quick. <laughs> oh, hold on. I'm already unmuted. Uh, so, um, you know, the one thing I also don't want to do is, uh, some people make this into a three hour marathon either. So, uh, I do love what uh, everybody has shared today and, you know, the different perspectives and, and, and things are just so, you know, that's another thing. Not a one of you all could have articulated anything like that, including me, <laughs> prior to this. So uh, I thought maybe you would uh, just allow Christopher the microphone and uh, we'll, we'll sail out of here and, uh, and, you know, continue to walk this path and beat this drum and allow people to, uh, you know, share this podcast, share this thing and, and, and offer this to anybody who might, who might want it. Christopher. Thanks, Dan. Love you. Happy birthday to you, Cesar. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Ross. And thank you all. I just over here moved very deeply and, um, I have no illusions. Should anybody try to say this about me? This is not about me. This is about this miracle gift we've been given. And I'm just a messenger. I try to carry the message as authentically and as pure as it was given it to me by my teachers. And that's it. And I always give glory to my teachers because without them, I don't, I don't have anything. I know what I'd be doing today. I'd be drinking alcohol and using drugs today without my teachers. And that's not helping anybody in this world. Um, two things I wanted to talk about on the end here. The, 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 it's astounding to me that my first reaction after going through this process and getting that lighter than air feeling that April was talking about was why is this not written down somewhere? That, I had that thought all the way back when, at 18 years recovery, when I, when I first went through this and had that. And then as I was going to meetings and I tried to share it and they give you that doggy don't understand look I talk about in the book where they're like, <laughs> like, we don't know where Christopher's coming from, but he's kind of different. So we just let him do his thing. And, you know, we, we don't pay much attention to him. And I was, you know, I was like, but I have this thing that I want to share. And so the goal of the book was there, you're right, man. People don't have access to teachers and sponsors or 12 step programs that provide this. So it had to be a, a self enclosed entity where anybody could pick it up on a deserted island and it would have the entire process documented, which is why, hence the length, which I don't apologize for anymore. I wanted a living document that was recorded for history, that this is this this can't be lost now. Whereas, you know, a lot of our program, as Dan talks about, is tribal knowledge. We pass from one person to another, and your sponsor gives it to you in the front seat of his car, and then where does it go from there? Maybe you have a sponsee that you pass it to, but there's no recorded document except for the big book and the 12 and 12. To, to take you through the full process, and you're right, those documents, it was too early in this receiving of this gift for people to be able to document all these little ins and outs that we've learned over the years that make it go much better. If you do it this way, newcomer it goes much better because how many of them do we lose in step four and step nine? Because they're doing it, I won't want to say wrong, but they're doing it some cockeyed way, 
yeah, I'm writing all my stuff across the page. I'm just doing one person at a time, all four columns. It's like, no, that doesn't work the best. If you do it this way, one column at a time, you can puke it all out and get it all out easier. So this is an optimized version, an easier version of doing it. it has all the instructions in there. And the second thing I wanted to say is, the one great equalizer about all of us humans is we come in this world the same and we go out the same, man. And we all came in here with this original spirit when we talk about spiritual sickness, I just felt like I needed to explain this to people who are not unfamiliar. We come in with this original spirit that has no guards, no shame, does not know guilt, and isn't really that negative. <laughs> I'd be really astonished if anybody could hold a newborn in their arms and see anything negative about this living creature. And especially around the idea of God or something like that. We haven't taught that creature yet about all this twisted up weird ass teachings that man has come up with. And so the very moment that, you know, I'd say it all began with at that moment when you opened up your mouth and went really loud and some adult didn't want to hear it. And they came at you with that. That was the first time somebody stepped on your soul. Somebody stepped on your spirit your essence. I don't care what you call it, but you had this spark, this spark of life inside you. And somebody just went, wham. And that's the beginning of a thousand lashes, man, 10,000, 100,000, million lashes. Your whole life, you're taught these weird ass teachings from people who are sick themselves because they were taught by people who were sick. And this gets passed on and on. And then you become like Holly said, you think that's normal. It's normal that we're destroying the planet just so we can be happy today. Screw the next generations, you know, whatever that normal is. It's, it's until you have that perspective of being able to step out and say, wait a minute, that's really, why am I eating this shitty food that's killing me and going to cause me a heart attack and I know it's not good for me? Whatever it is, that is our normal. You get a chance to reevaluate that and get back to your original self. And, and uh, a lot of writers have talked about this. Um, the authenticity. When, when, when April said she was going to jump in and then she just did that little motion, that was her little kid coming out. And I don't think she would have been able to do that on her first meeting when she first came to us. We're all too bound up with all these teachings and voices. Programming is what I call it, but if that's too strong a word, just conditioning to let our authentic self out and be and have fun and be who we are. And that's the one common theme I see in all these people in this room and in every meeting I go to of TSSR is their little kid is coming out. They're starting to let that joy out, starting to let that spirit out that, you know, if you're smiling, you can cause another person to smile versus I would, I would challenge anybody, go to the local mall and sit down and watch people. Go to the bus station, the airport, sit down and watch people. The airport's a real good one because usually people are traveling on business they look dead. They look dead in their face and their reactions. And everybody's walking around with this apprehension that, oh, if I have an inter another interaction with another human being, is it going to get violent? If you don't believe that, watch two people try to use the same overhang space in an airplane and then be like, oh, well, I'm sorry. I wasn't trying to, you know, you know, or they get real forceful and they just force it in there. And one guy takes the lead, you know, I'll get violent with that. And it's like we're, we're at odds with each other. And this methodology can strip away all those things you do not like, do not want, that aren't part of who you really are. And again, I say it all the time. If you can find me another methodology that's as effective in such a short time, I'll do it. I'll sit here and write a book on that. But truly, when we use the word miracle, that I could be changed in four to six months from an entire life of conditioning. I don't care, you're 30 years old, 40 years old, 60 years old. You've got all those years of conditioning and, and crazy messages. Drink Pepsi, drink Coke. <laughs> it's all conditioning. If you lived in another country, if you lived on a deserted island, you wouldn't even know about any of it. And to be able to change that in four to six months, you tell me that's not a miracle. And I will end on that. Thank you for letting me share. Thank you, Chris. Love you. Oh, awesome. Thanks. Love you. Yeah.
Um, I, you know, just on a personal level, I, I, I continually tell Chris how much I appreciate him and what this has done for me and what, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's just beyond anything I can do besides, uh, you know, I think, uh, in the beginning I said, I believe that we were, uh, and he, he said it to me first and, uh, and I've adopted, there's a whole lot of stuff I now believe that I didn't before. And, uh, and now I will say them with conviction, but when Christopher said to me the first time, I'm, I didn't let, try to let him see me roll my eyes, but, uh, they were rolling. And, uh, and that's a cool thing that, that to, to be aware of that change, but that I believe we were brought together on purpose. And I think this is what's going on. And, uh, and, and I've been given some tools and some, uh, some avenues and some ways to, uh, do some things that helps nudge this along. And I, and I feel like it's my duty to do that. That is part of this purpose in my life is to, uh, to pick up this ball and, uh, and carry it. So thank you, Christopher, for showing me the ball where it was hidden at, because uh, that's the thing. I didn't know where it was. I didn't even know there was a ball uh, to pick up and run with called life. So the uh, you hear it said a lot of different ways, the jelly and the donut, the rubber meets the road. There's a lot of different cliches for uh, that moment the sea change. Saw a guy do it this morning, been hanging around and he's asked for help. And my group has offered him help and he's in a pinch again. And I know with absolute certainty that if he would accept the help that was offered to him, he wouldn't be where he is right now. I know he wouldn't, that doesn't happen. And that's the thing is this guy will not accept this gift that's being laid at his feet. Uh, and you repeat your, you know, you're going to stay stuck and this is an unstucker. <laughs> and, and I, and I agree with Christopher on 100% that I, you show me another method that is effective as this is, uh, that is as powerful as this is relatively painless, really. Uh, cost effective too. It cost effective. It doesn't cost you anything. <laughs> uh, you know, I mean, we do a little self-contributing thing, but you know, if you can't afford that, no big deal. You get to have this for free. People spend thousands and thousands of dollars monkeying around trying to find some way to get better. And I would venture to 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 say that if you sit down with anybody, I could go across the street with a neighbor. I could go to the airport, to the grocery store, and if I could get somebody to actually get honest with me, if I sit them down and ask them, there's a lot of shit in their life that is not going the way they wished it would. And I know one of the opening lines in that book is, my life it was, is not supposed to be like this. And we smile through it and we push because it becomes our normal and we think we have no recourse to do anything different. I'm just on this rail, just like a train, and I don't have the option to turn. The rails are going that way, and I'm just going to hang on tight until we smash to the end of it. And uh, I'm here to tell you that that does not have to happen, that the power to change your life is within your reach. And this is, there's, you can't make an argument not to do this. You can't, you, you can't convince me. Your life is not that good, <laughs> that you don't need it. That no, nope, won't accept it. You can't throw up cost. You can't throw up uh, time. Uh, you know, my job, my family life. You can't put anything up that this cannot fit into. There isn't. You can. This is. This is. Uh, this is available to all. And the miracles that have happened in my life, I want so badly for everyone to receive them. Uh, to have this available to them. Um, you know, uh, once again, I can't put words in. I'll, I'll tell you where, I'll tell you where it is. It's in the fact that I sit down here at this podcast and I spend a tremendous amount of my life's energy at this game, at this promotion of, of what's going on here, making it available out there. And uh, that's really the, that's the telling note. Uh, anybody that knows me knows how much energy I put into my recovery and I do it not for me. I do it for you. And you don't do that stuff 
without a huge change of heart. You don't. I wouldn't. So thank you, Christopher. You mean the world to me. Everybody in here means the world to me. Uh, these bonds and these connections that I know today. Uh, another rabbit hole I've been in is this, watching these how these SEAL teams operate, the elite special forces group in the world. And I watch them have got some deal on this, leaning on one another, rid yourself of self-centeredness, uh, break old habits, uh, and and do all that, and I and and I watch them, so those kind of bonds happen uh, there, and that's the way I feel here. I feel like I have people at my back. I don't feel. I know I have people that support me today. I know I'm seen. I know I'm heard, and I know I have support. And I think that's like food, water, and shelter for the human spirit. So. Thank you all for uh, helping me do this today. I've been looking forward to it, Christopher, and I've been talking about it for a little while. Uh, it's so easy to do with Zoom anymore that uh, we can just pull these things together. Uh, on a separate note, I thank you all for sharing your stories on my on my show and your way of service, of, of uh, it's your service to this movement by telling people what happened to you. Uh, that's our biggest that's our biggest way to carry it. What happened to you? you we tell them what we did. So uh, I guess I'll close the same way I close every one of them because I am having a blast today. <laughs> and uh, if you're not having a blast, and, and I say if you're not having a blast in your recovery, if you're not having a blast in life today, it's your own damn fault because we're standing here with it on a silver platter willing to hand it to you for free. And Thank everybody here that showed up with me and anybody listening and, uh, and my whole support group in the world for allowing me to participate in my recovery in this manner today. Peace out.